So for this meditation session on metta practice, I wanted to um, emphasize using uh, loving kindness as an attitude towards our practice, towards whatever we experience in our body and mind. Um, and of course, one of the beautiful qualities of loving kindness is not only that it feels good, that it's a very pleasant experience, that it helps to um, uh, widen the heart, but it also has this special quality of overcoming uh, ill will and aversion, which is a very insidious um, kilesa or defilement. I don't quite like that word. I think of it more of a stain on the mind. Um, so ill will is, is very subtle and sometimes hard to see. So sometimes we think of it as um, a very coarse form of ill will towards someone that we don't like. Perhaps we even wish someone harm if we have a lot of anger and aversion towards them. But um, sometimes we internalize that kind of ill will towards ourselves, which is quite perverse in a sense. And I know that um, the Dalai Lama was very shocked to when he first came to the West and he started hearing from people that are brought up in perhaps more capitalistic societies, which are more individualistic, um, less family and community oriented, that we struggle with a lot of self-hate. And he was very shocked by that. He said, but why would anyone do that to themselves? And yet we do this, you know, we have these um, very subtle, sometimes more obvious attitudes of ill will, of self, um, de what's the word, um, self-deprecation. That's something very English, actually, <laughs> you know, or you might have noticed in yourself when somebody says thank you, or they say, oh, or they mention one of your qualities, you say, oh, no, 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 you know, it was nothing. Oh, no, 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 you know, I'm actually not like that. I'm actually much worse than that. <laughs> and we find it very hard to receive that kind of praise and encouragement. And I've noticed for myself when I want to tell somebody that I respect them, that I appreciate their qualities, sometimes they resist hearing it. And it's actually quite uncomfortable for the giver as well. You know, you want to sort of boost somebody up to express something beautiful and they their heart is closed. It's like, no, 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 you know, I'm not like that. I, I didn't do anything. And it can actually be a little bit of a, a struggle to get that message across. And I remember this interaction actually at Jana Grove while I was on my Rains retreat. Normally I come every year. This year the borders are closed. Um, and I was trying to tell the bikuni that I was staying with that I see this beautiful generosity and humility and kindness in her. And she kept saying, no, no, no. And it was actually quite painful. And finally I said, just, just take it. And she did. And it was like an opening in my heart as well. It was very lovely. So we can have this kind of ill will towards others, towards ourselves, and even towards our meditation objects. And so when we begin our practice by establishing a, a wise attitude of loving kindness, of acceptance, of uh, friendliness towards our inner world, um, it actually has the it has double impact. We're not, we're not only becoming aware and awake to the nature of reality, we're also adding the loving kindness, which simultaneously helps us to overcome the hindrance of ill will. So it has double strength, you know. I think that's what Ajahn Brown means by bear awareness, not with a B-A-R-E, but with B-E-A-R. It's awareness with fluffy bear, <laughs> with meta added to it. So this is my fluffy bear. This is Venerable P.T. Sukha, the first bikuni bear in England. <laughs> and she even took precepts with Ajahn Brahm. So <laughs> it sounds silly, but I think it's good to bring a bit of lightheartedness to our practice and help overcome this defilement of ill will. So without much more explanation, I would like us to practice because I know you're all in retreat. So the people at Jana Grover in retreat and people listening throughout the world, I think it's, again, one of the best ways to pay respect to our teacher is just to do the practice. So please make yourself comfortable and ask your body what your body needs. Be led by the body rather than treating the body like a slave. So if you're now sitting on the floor, but you think, well, actually my body's quite achy and tired, I'm not sure this is going to sustain me for the next hour, then please take the opportunity to change and move onto a chair. 
Where I'm staying at the moment, there's a sofa, which is wide enough to sit on cross-legged. So sometimes I do that and have some support for my back. Or you might want to have a chair that you can sit on with your legs just on the floor, especially if you have knee problems or maybe hip problems or you're not used to sitting cross-legged. So really sense in to what your body needs right now. And this is the first opportunity to establish an attitude of loving kindness to our body. Taking all the time you need. slow down, to settle down. To settle into your body. And to show your body that it's in the friendly presence of the mind. When the body knows that it's in friendly company, it naturally starts to relax. So just opening to any sensations you experience, noticing any tendencies to withdraw, Pull away, reject through aversion. Any tendencies to cling or crave to pleasant experiences, to craving and greed. Just accepting all experience as part of nature nothing to do with you. And to help us establish mindfulness and kindness together. What Ajahn Brahm geniusly coins as kindfulness. I'd like you to imagine that you're in the presence of someone you deeply revere and respect. For those who have confidence, devotion towards our teacher, Ajahn Brahm, you might imagine that you're sitting with him.
and he's looking at you with kindly eyes. Just putting you at ease. Letting you know you're welcome. You're accepted just as you are. Not even noticing your faults. Or if he does, he sees them as features. Attributes that make you unique. That make you lovable. And you also feel that you're respected. That your teacher sees your potential. Is confident that you are on this path. knows that it's nothing to do with your capacity, your ability, but simply a process of cause and effect. We have the word of another, Paritta Gosa. We have the Buddha's teaching. We have the teachings of our revered Ajahn Brahm. Now all we need to do is put them in practice. Allow the mind to calm and settle. And allow the Dhamma to manifest. The process to unfold. So with this feeling of acceptance, of being regarded with kindly eyes and with confidence, let's begin this meditation by just doing a little body scan. Starting with the tips of our toes, just contacting any sensation in that part of your body, resting your awareness there, and infusing that awareness with kindness, friendliness, warmth, curiosity. Allowing your toes to relax.
spreading this kindfulness throughout your feet, the soles, the bridges of your feet. the ankles, noticing any sensations you come across there without looking for anything special. Just receiving whatever arises in the area of your feet. and regarding those sensations with kindness. As though your mindfulness were a medium through which kindness can flow. So that wherever mindfulness goes, the kindness follows kindness flows. And in your own time, moving up into the shins, the calves, right up to the knees. Allowing the kindfulness to sink deep into the flesh, into the bones. Relaxing any aches, tightness or tension in the lower legs and the knees. Perhaps staying a little longer in any areas that feel tense, painful. Just with kindness and patience, as though your awareness was soothing those areas, giving them a mental massage. Spreading upward into the thighs, leaving no part untouched. Just receiving any data and taking the opportunity to care.
moving into the hips, the buttocks, the seat of the trunk. Regarding any sensations with kindly eyes. And noticing if this kindness has any effect on the nature of those sensations. Perhaps just a very subtle softening, easing of tensions, of aches or pains, or just by accepting those feelings, your mind opens up. Just the play of nature, not me, not mine, not a self. And this kindfulness starts to explore the lower part of the trunk, the abdomen, with all its organs, the lower back. You don't need to visualize anything, just get into the feeling part of the mind that receives information, sensations, and cares for those sensations. Spreading up into the chest, around the ribs, right across the top of the back, to areas that you maybe don't notice or ignore. any longer in any areas that may have disease or some sickness and trusting this kindfulness has a power to heal. including the sides of the body, the armpits, moving into the shoulders, where we hold so much tension and strain. If you find your shoulders are hunched or tensed up, you can still relax them physically. 
Maybe just rolling them very gently, slowly back. And just imagining all those tendons and muscles gently expanding, relaxing, loosening up as they receive the warmth of kindfulness. And if you notice your mind hardening around any sensation, pulling back, just see if you can add a little loving kindness. An attitude of welcoming them in. Spreading kindfulness down your arms. Into the elbows, the lower arms and the hands. Sensing into each and every finger and fingertip. Picking up any sensations in the arms, in the hands. Maybe pleasant sensations of tingling, warmth, softness. Moving back up slowly in your own time without losing contact into your shoulders and into your neck. Caring for your neck, for your throat. Allowing it to fully relax. Noticing your jaw. Another place we tend to hold tension and stress. Perhaps just gently parting the teeth to help your jaw relax.
Receiving any sensations in the lips, the mouth. The cheeks. Just letting the flesh of your cheeks hang down. The nose, the nostrils, the eyes. Imagining the eyes just hanging in their sockets as though suspended in space. Noticing the brow temples, releasing and relaxing any tension there, as though your kindfulness were gently massaging outwards from the center of your forehead toward the temples, expanding that area. smoothing out your forehead. And gently resting your awareness, infused with kindness on the top of the head, spreading it across the entire scalp area, including the ears, the back of the scalp, and just noticing any sensations over there. Then imagining your brain inside your skull, your scalp. And imagining all those little wires, signals, neurons that are firing all day long. Just dimming down and turning off. Now we've completed the body scan. Just bring into focus the entire body as though your kindfulness were including the entire physical world of your inner experience inside this body.
And notice if there's any tension or holding that you can just let go of. As though your body were floating in a warm turquoise pool. No need to hold. And this beautiful attitude of kindfulness starts to expand to include your mental world. So that any thoughts or emotions that arise can be welcomed gently and let go of without them disturbing the peace of the mind. And you may start to notice the silent spaces between the words, the thoughts in your mind. This silence is another beautiful friend that you can receive with loving kindness.
for some of you, you may notice that as the mind quietens, the breath enters your mind. If this happens, see if you can regard the breath as another beautiful, benevolent and wise friend. Welcoming the breath. Being kind to the breath without clinging or trying to make it stay. Just focusing on this attitude of loving kindness towards whatever arises in the mind. Inclining towards the peace, the simplicity of silence, or of one simple, humble little breath. So I'll be silent for a few minutes. And just allow the breath or whatever you're aware of to take the mind deeper into peace. I'm always making the attitude the most important thing in your practice. So we're coming towards the end of this meditation. How do you feel now? And why? How did this attitude of loving kindness help to deepen your practice, 
to overcome craving and ill will. And what happened when you moved away from loving kindness into expectation or demand? without judging yourself at all, but just noticing the natural causal process of how right intention helps dissolve suffering, overcome ill will, and as a result, lead to deeper peace. So I'd like to invite you to close this meditation by sharing the merits of our practice however subtle the benefits may be. Sometimes we really don't know how powerful these practices are right away. The benefits keep on coming in our lives at times you may not expect. So whatever goodness I've generated through this practice, however much peace and contentment, however much wisdom has arisen, may all beings share this peace, contentment and wisdom. May all beings be free from suffering and pain. And may our teacher, Ajahn Brahm, be well, be safe. Be healthy for a long time to come so that he can continue to share the powerful, beautiful, Magnificent Dhamma. With many more people in this world. And as a gift to our teacher, may we too, may I be free from suffering. May I practice with sincerity and wisdom. May I keep on aligning my intentions, my thoughts and actions with the Noble Eightfold Path as best I can. And forgive myself fully and completely for any mistakes I may make. Knowing that just as the Buddha the enlightened bhikkhunis and bhikkhus of the past and present have confidence in me. 
May I also develop confidence in my own ability to walk this Eightfold Noble Path and to bring benefit to countless other beings. So I'd like to close again with a little blessing chanting to spread loving kindness to all of us, including ourselves, to our teacher Ajahn Brahm, our other Kalyanamittas on this path, spiritual friends, and to all beings everywhere. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pugala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariapana Sabe Iti Om Sabe Porisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anaria Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Winipadika I wear a horn to I be a patcha horn to I need a horn to Sukiatanam Parihalan to Dukamunjan to Yadalada Sampatito Mawe Gachantu Kamasaka Sadu 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 So Venerable P.T. Sukha Bikuni Bear is also saying Sadu with everybody and wishing you well with a big hug. Hee <laughs> hee.